Now what exactly is an amp? What does the amp represent? An amp is a unit of electric current. It tells you how much current is flowing in a circuit. And electric current is equal to the charge divided by the time. So current represents the rate of charge flow. And charge is proportional to the quantity of charged particles, such as the quantity of electrons or protons. But when dealing with metals, which wires are made up of metals, electrons are the charge carriers. Electrons are free to move in a metal. Now the unit of charge is coulombs, and the unit for time is seconds, and the unit for current is amps. So one amp represents the flow of one coulomb of charge per second. Now what is a coulomb, and how does it relate to electrons? It turns out that one electron has an electric charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So if that's the case, how many electrons is represented by one coulomb of charge, or rather, negative one coulomb of charge, since electrons are negatively charged? To find this answer, we need to convert coulombs to electrons. So we said that one electron has a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So you want to set this up in such a way that the unit coulombs will cancel. So if you take negative 1 and divide it by negative 1.6 times 10 to negative 19, you'll get this number, 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So one coulomb of charge represents this many electrons. So if that's the case, this helps us to relate the unit of current to electrons. So we said that one amp of current represents one coulomb of charge that flows per second. We could also say that one amp of current represents the flow of 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons that flow in a circuit per second. And so an amp, or the unit of current, tells you how many electrons are flowing per unit time. And so this helps you to get a better understanding of what an amp truly means. It tells us how much charge is flowing per unit time. So you can describe an amp this way, one coulomb of charge flowing per second, or this way, 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons flowing in a circuit every second. Now when dealing with current in an electric circuit, You'll see units such as amps, milliamps, microamps, and you might see some other ones, but these three are the most common. You need to know how they relate to one another. For instance, you need to know that one amp is a thousand milliamps, and also one milliamp is 1,000 microamps. So a microamp is very small. One microamp is basically 0 0.000001 of an amp. And then one milliamp is 0 0.001 amps. So the milliamp is pretty small, but the microamp is a very, very small. It's a very tiny amount of current. And so you need to be familiar uh, when dealing with these in a circuit. So if you see an amp, that's a relatively large amount of current. A milliamp is pretty small, a microamp very, very small. Now, just to give you a good idea of these different uh, types of current, let's say if you have a 9-volt battery, and let's say you short-circuit it by connecting it directly to an ammeter. That is a device that measures current. Let's say this is the positive terminal, and this is the negative terminal. Conventional current will flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, but electrons, they flow in the opposite direction, from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Now, depending on the type of brand of 9-volt battery that you're dealing with, you might find that some 9-volt batteries may discharge about 500 milliamps of current. Some might emit 1 amp of current. 
some, which may be weaker, might emit 250 milliamps. And so 9 volt batteries, they really don't dish out uh, too much current. Now let's say if you have, let's, uh, let's say a, a AA battery, let's say like a high-end AA battery, like a Duracell or Energizer, and you connect it across an ammeter, you'll find that these devices, they would usually discharge more current. Some batteries might emit 5 amps, some 10 amps, and some weaker ones might emit 1 or 2 amps. But usually, it's typically in this range. Now, if you're dealing with a car battery, it can dish out a lot more current. Now, you don't want to short circuit this because you can get some serious sparks and you, you don't want to do that. But typically, these things, when let's say you're starting up a car, they can crank up 500 amps. Some could do 750. Some could do even 1,000. And so they can discharge a lot of current. 1,000 amps is the equivalent of 1 kiloamp. So anytime you see kiloamps, it represents 1,000 amps. So 5 kiloamps would be 5,000 amps. Now, let's say if you have a current of 250 milliamps. How much current does this represent in amps? So how can you convert milliamps to amps? So here's a quick technique. To convert milliamps to amps, simply divide by 1,000. To convert amps to milliamps, multiply by 1,000. Now, if you want to show your work, you can set it up this way. Start with what you're given, 250 milliamps. And then you need to cancel the unit milliamps. So we need to put milliamps on the bottom, amps on top. Now we know that one amp is equal to 1,000 milliamps. And so if you set it up this way, this will remind you that you need to take 250 and divide it by 1,000. And that will give you an answer. To divide by 1,000, move the decimal point three units to the left. So 250 milliamps is 0.25 amps. And so that's a simple way in which you can convert milliamps to amps. Now let's try another example. Let's say if we wanted to convert 0 0.073 amps into milliamps. Go ahead and try it. Now if we're going from amps to milliamps, we need to multiply by a thousand. But let's show our work though. So this time we have the unit amps on top. To convert it to milliamps, we need to put amps on the bottom, milliamps on top. Now we know that one amp is equal to a thousand milliamps. So when you set it up in this way, such that the unit amps cancel, the thousand is on the top, so you gotta multiply 0 0.073 times a thousand. So this time, we're gonna take the decimal point and move it three units to the left. I mean, not to the left, but to the right. So this will give us 73 milliamps. So now you know how to convert between amps and milliamps. Now when dealing with electronic circuits, there are some formulas that you want to be familiar with. The first one is Ohm's law. Voltage is equal to current times resistance. So V is for voltage, it's measured in volts. I represents the current, which is measured in amps. And R is the resistance, which is measured in ohms. Another equation that you need to be familiar with is this. Power is voltage times current. Power is measured in watts. And you know V is measured in volts. I is measured in amps. So for this equation, we can see that one watt is equal to one volt times one amp. And for the other equation, Ohm's law, we can see that one volt is equal to one amp of current times one ohm, which is represented by the omega symbol. Now let's work on some problems. A 9 volt battery is connected across a light bulb with an internal resistance of 200 ohms. What is the current flowing in the circuit in milliamps? So let's draw a circuit. So that's the symbol of a battery. And let's draw a light bulb. So 
So this is the positive terminal of the battery, and this is the negative terminal. And so we have a 9-volt battery and a light bulb with 200 ohms of resistance. How can we determine the current? Well, we can start with Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. So the voltage is 9 volts. We're looking for the current, and the resistance is 200. So to calculate the current, we need to get I by itself on the right side. So let's divide both sides by 200. And so it's going to be 9 divided by 200, which comes out to be 0 0.045 amps. Now we're looking for the current in the circuit in milliamps. So to convert amps to milliamps, should we multiply by 1,000 or divide by 1,000? Well, we need to multiply by 1,000, so let's move the decimal point three units to the right. So the current in this circuit is 45 milliamps. Now what about this one? A 50-watt laptop is connected to a 120-volt power supply. How much current is flowing in milliamps? So whenever you see the unit watts, you're dealing with power. And here we're dealing with voltage. And our goal is to calculate the current. So what formula relates power, voltage, and current? So this is P is equal to VI. This is the formula that we need to use. So P in this problem is 50 watts. V is 120 volts. And we need to calculate the current. So to get the current by itself, we need to divide both sides by 120. And so these will cancel. And so it's going to be 50 over 120. And so the current is going to be 0.4167 amps. Now we want the answer in milliamps again. So let's multiply by 1,000 or by moving the decimal point three units to the right. So this is going to be 416.7 milliamps. And so that's it for this problem. Number three, a current of 170 milliamps flows through a resistor for 15 minutes. Estimate the number of electrons that flow through the resistor during this time. So here's a resistor, and we have the current flowing in it. How can we use the current and the time to determine the number of electrons? Well, we know that 170 milliamps is basically 0.17 amps. To convert milliamps to amps, we need to divide by 1,000 or move the decimal three units to the left. Now recall that one amp is basically one column of charge flown every second. So if one amp is one column per second, we could say that 0.17 amps is 0.17 columns per second. So let's start with the time in minutes. And let's convert it to seconds. Now one minute is equal to 60 seconds. And so we can see the unit minutes cancel. And then let's multiply this by 0.17 columns per second. So now the unit seconds cancels. And then we know that one electron has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 columns. Now, since we're dealing with the number of electrons, we don't have to worry about the negative sign. But if you want to put it here, you need to put the negative sign in both locations. In the end, you should get a positive answer. So notice that our final unit will be in electrons. So it's going to be 15 times 60 times 0.17 divided by 1.6 times 10 to negative 19. And so the final answer is 9.5625 times 10 to the 20 electrons. So in 15 minutes, this is how many electrons will have flowed through this resistor, given a current of 170 milliamps. So the higher the current, the greater the number of electrons that would have flowed through this resistor. Because you can see we've incorporated the current using this number.